We have with us today Michelle Buchanan, who is the Extension Crop Production Agent for Midway District, which consists of Russell and Ellsworth counties. Currently, their harvest is over, but she is here to tell us how the harvest process went. Yeah, I think we're in, in both counties, we're just wrapping everything up. There's still a few um, combines out there running, but I think most everyone, if they're not done yet, is, is getting towards the tail end of finishing up everything they've got to do out there. Well, can you let listeners know some of the yield trend and test weights that were going on? Yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of people were pleasantly surprised with what they saw out in the fields. Um, quite variant between our, our counties, north to south, and then east to west. Um, we see a lot of differences. But, you know, I, I heard everything coming in in Russell County from somewhere around mid to low 20s all the way up to, you know, mid 50s. Um, I think probably a good average was in the 38, 40 range, somewhere in there. In Ellsworth County, a little bit higher. Most of the people I talked to in, in the Ellsworth County area we were running somewhere between, oh, probably 40 and 60. I did hear some um, up around um, 70, 75. I think one guy even said he was at 78 bushel per acre. So. so did you see any production issues that happened? We did have some production issues like most of the other counties in Kansas we had a lot of different things throughout the growing season that took a toll on the wheat you know the drought started it off and we got thin spots because of that Um, then that late freeze that came in also did some damage Um, we had some fields that were zeroed out before we even you know got a jump on it because of those things but then um, the rains came along which definitely helped and they easily you know added a significant amount of bushel per acre to the crop to help us out for this harvest and of course we had the diseases that came in stripe rust did um, get quite rampant in the counties here and and I think that we had quite a few people that sprayed but also a number of people that didn't and that made a difference I think on bushel per acre. And did you see any varieties that might have stood out over others? You know I think all of the varieties that had some resistance to stripe rust I, I think that's probably where we're seeing a little bit of difference. Some of those that are pretty highly susceptible. We see maybe taking a a little bit bigger hit, especially on the people that didn't spray. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. And that was Michelle Buchanan, Extension Crop Production Agent for the Midway District, discussing the Russell and Ellsworth County's harvest. We will now move to the southern part of the state, to Harvey County. As wheat harvest is close to being finished here in Kansas, we have with us today Cody Miller, who is the Extension Crop Production Agent for the Philip Rooks District. Cody, can you tell us the harvest progress in your location? So we're located in the Phillips and Rooks County, and progress-wise, we're pretty well wrapping up. Uh, There's a few producers that are still waiting on fields. Unfortunately, they had to spray for weeds that came in later, so they're waiting for the, the weeds to burn down, and then they can get those harvested off. And can you tell listeners some yield trend, test weight, and moisture content? So we've had a little bit of everything all over the board. We've had everything from reports of down in the single digits all the way up to 70 bushel on our dry land side. Now, probably more so on the average for the whole district, Phillips and Rooks County, uh, probably 30 to 40 bushel per acre would probably catch more of it. Moisture-wise, we're pretty good on it. It's kind of, it's very interesting. We've been all over the board as well, though. Started out, a lot of it was very dry, and then uh, some of it in our no-till systems or also uh, some of the fields that maybe were overcome with weeds, the moisture wanted to climb a little bit on it. And did you see any production issues that happened? Production issues this year, uh, I I think a lot of the producers are really glad to get this wheat harvest over with. It it all started uh, coming into the spring. Uh, We had a lot of winter kill and no rhyme nor reason. I think a lot of it contributes back to that really cooling off or the cold snap we got in November. So we got through the November winter kill and going into the spring, a lot of our stands were very thin, extremely dry. And then we started to catch some rains, fortunately. Some of that maybe was a little later. Some of the guys, their producers would have maybe top-dressed, sprayed for weeds if they'd only known. And then when we got closer to harvest, we were plagued with the stripe rust and leaf rust. And those diseases, the producers that sprayed uh, foliar fungicide on that 
it definitely paid big dividends on certain varieties, and you could certainly uh, tell the difference on those. So with that, was there any varieties that might have stood out? Some of the varieties that producers are talking about uh, standing out, I know I'll always forget some, but some that are really being hit home on are Winterhawk has been doing very good. Everest has been doing good, particularly if you sprayed a fungicide on it. Newer one, LCS Mint, has been doing very good. And the one that topped both of our plot, our extension plots this year, uh, was Grainfield. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Cody. Yeah, thank you. That was Cody Miller, Extension Crop Production Agent for the Philip Rooks District, discussing the harvest so far. We will now move down just one county to Trigo County which is part of the Golden Prairie District. With us today is Scott Barrows, who is the Extension Crop Production Agent for Trigo County, and he's here to discuss how the harvest has been going so far. Scott, can you tell us the harvest progress in your location? I would consider us 98% done. The only wheat left out in the field are a a three-way rotation out here, and it's continuous crop wheat that was just had some more sucker heads a little later, and that's that's held some harvesters out of the field on some small acres. And can you tell listeners some of the yield trends, test weight, and moisture content? We really didn't have an issue with uh, moisture content other than what I'm saying is all that wheat that's kind of slowed us up and held some farmers out for a couple days was continuous crop, and that's really kind of rare out here in western Kansas. Test weights we've had some issues with. We have cut some 61, 62 pound test wheat, but you know some of my best farmers also cut some 55 and 56. And location, you know, I, I'm 50 plus years old and it's been so long, you know, I grew up in, in wheat country out here and and we had general rains and, and now this year's crop was so affected by spotty rains or freezes Uh, There's really not a generalization anymore, and it's hard to figure a county yield because you've had wheat that has been crop insurance out for less than eight bushels to an acre, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it was disease, rust, or or just flat dab drought. And we lost a lot of wheat to winter kill. Last winter, as we went into dormancy, and we had some weird days in there in November. We were 75 one day, and then, you know, it dropped down into the low 30s. Do you think that there's varieties that might have stood out over others? Tim 111 is probably our, our old staple out here. I really like the Denali variety, and it works good out here. But in some parts in the county, it was probably the lowest yielding, and in other parts, it was the highest yielding. I, I think what the farmers have to do is know what their strengths and their weaknesses of their wheat is, mm-hmm. and then manage that accordingly. Okay, well, thank you so much, Scott. You're more than welcome. Again, that was Scott Barrows, the Extension Crop Production Agent, discussing the Trigo County harvest so far. For Agriculture Today, I'm Charles C. Craig.